What is up, Tribies, and welcome back to the tribe. I first want to say thank you to all the many tribe members who joined into this big, beautiful, melanated tribe. And if you have not joined into this big, beautiful, melanated tribe, I'm going to need you to go right over here, hit that red subscribe button, and join into all of the tribalness that we have got going on over here. So today's video is going to be about protective styling and why you may not be seeing any results, despite the fact that you're putting a lot of effort into protective styling, why you're not seeing that length be retained and why you're not seeing the overall health of your hair uh, progress. So protective styling by far is one of the best methods that you can use along with low manipulation, but primarily protective styling is one of the best methods that you can use to retain length and to get overall really good results when it comes to your hair health. Now when not done the right way, you can find yourself still stuck at the same length no progress, your health of your hair seems to be at the same state or even declining, or you're not retaining that length that you want. So if you're interested to hear the tips that I have for you guys and how you can maximize your protective styling game, just keep on watching. So what is protective styling? Well, just what it sounds like, it's a style that primarily protects your hair. And when I say protect your hair, I mean your ends are tucked away. That is the whole and complete idea of protective styling. The less friction you have on your ends, the less they're like rubbing against your clothes and rubbing against things, the less breakage and the more length of retention you'll have. Now, don't get it twisted. No pun intended. <laughs> Just because you throw some twists in your hair and let them hang and slang does not mean that style is protective. It may be low manipulation, but it is not protective until your ends are completely tucked away. Now let's get into low manipulation styles and what that is predominantly. Now a low manipulation style is a style that helps you prevent over manipulation which causes mechanical damage to your hair if you are over manipulating your hair constantly and that in return you're going to start seeing the decline of your hair health and also length retention now as low manipulation style it does not help to retain as much length as a protective style was it is still a very good method to practice if you are not the type of person who likes to fully you know you do protective styles to your hair and that is completely fine and things like protective are things like low manipulation styles would be things like twist outs and braid outs predominantly because you're twisting your hair you're letting those twists stay in for however long you let them stay in for you untwist your hair and then you have a style now you tie it up at night and you'll wake up in the next day and then you'll go about your business shake it out and you're good to go that is low manipulation because you're not uh, sitting there combing and tugging and, you know, pulling your hair every which way. You're just wearing the style as it is. All right, so let's talk about some common protective styles and how you can maximize the benefits of those protective styles and the common mistakes that we also do. When All right, so the first style we're going to be talking about are twists, two strand twists. Now, you guys know that I have grown my hair out predominantly with two strand twists and head wraps. If you guys haven't seen my head wrap tutorial, I'm going to post it right here. So go and watch that. But I have predominantly grown my hair out with two strand twists. When I started my natural hair journey, my hair was about collarbone length. My bang was about this short. I'll post the picture right here. That is me. I don't know if you can really see it, but that's all I got to work with right now. <laughs> so with twists, first you must find the perfect size twist for your hair type, your hair texture, and your hair density. Now you guys know that I have a lot of hair. It's very, very high density, very high density maybe like abnormally like dense, <laughs> but I have a really dense hair and my twists have to be at a very precise width 
for my hair not to tangle up too much or for it not to shrink up too much. And that is your goal. You wanna make sure that your twists are either big or small enough for it not to shrink up too much or tangle. Sorry, I got interrupted by my mother calling me. Thanks mom, I know you're watching this. Thank you. So like I was saying, you really wanna make sure that your twists are at the perfect width for your hair, because if it's too thick, your hair might tangle up too much. If it's too thin, it might tangle up too much. Um, if it's uh, too big, then it's gonna shrink up too much, which is gonna cause it tangles. And if it's too thin, it's going to shrink up and cause tangles. So <laughs> you really have to find the perfect width for your hair type. For me, uh, a mini twist to my to me and my hair would be about the width of my pinky. So that is considered a mini twist when it comes to my hair density. So if you're wearing your twist in too many styles, um, that could kind of set you back because your twists are you know, rub it against your clothing, um, you're wearing them in different ways, and that can really hinder your retention of your hair because you're just doing too much. So the idea is to keep your twist tucked away, uh, whether that is wearing your twist in a bun or wearing it in a head wrap like I predominantly do, um, is going to be the best thing for you to do. Letting your twist mat up. Now, you guys know when I put twists in my hair, I'm able to leave them in for months at a time because I worked my way up to that. I didn't just start off doing that and bam, all this hair grew. I worked myself up to that. So you might wanna leave your twist in for about two weeks and take them out, redo them. Leave them in for another two weeks, take them down, redo them. Then leave them in for three weeks, take them down, redo them. But in this time that you are um that you are putting your twist are the the duration of the time you have your twist in your hair you still want to pay attention to the individual twists themselves and if you feel like certain twists or certain areas of your hair is matting up more than others or getting frizzy you need to remove those twists and twist them and retwist them because what's going to happen is those twists are gonna mat together. And when you go to take them down, you're gonna cause yourself breakage because it's dry, because it's matted. And that is what we do not want to do. So for me, the area of my hair that gets a lot frizzier quicker is just like this front row. So I tend to redo these twists around my edges a little bit quicker than normal. And then the very nape of my neck, I find me doing those twists a little bit more frequently than the rest of my head. So I might have one dedicated day to where I predominantly work on the back or work on this side or work on that side. But you really wanna make sure that your twists are not matting up on itself and that you're taking the time to really look at those twists at the end of the day and saying to yourself, okay, maybe I need to redo this twist. Maybe I need to redo that twist. But Really paying attention to your hair is key when you have twist in and not just putting twist in and saying, all right, we're done. I'm good. That's it. See your hair for like the next two or three weeks. Like, no, you don't want to do that. You want to pay attention to your hair and you want to pay attention to your scalp and make sure that your scalp is cleansed. If you need to jump in the shower, wash your hair, wash your scalp, do whatever it is that you need to do. But you really do want to make sure that your, your scalp is also healthy. All right. Number two is braids i said it braids box braids with extension hair okay so now we're going to talk about hair um that you are adding in to your hair specifically to achieve these styles now with box braids they are a very 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 good protective style like i said if you're doing them right the one thing you do not ever, ever, ever want to do, you never want to do this, you never want to put additional hair into your hair if your hair is not healthy enough to withstand the tension, the extra tension from the additive hair, okay? So what does that mean? If your hair is already dry and brittle and, you know, um, 
and breaking off you do not want to put box braids in your hair with additional hair because that is just going to just cause a lot of havoc you can't get to your hair properly your hair is already breaking so why would you add more hair to it you need to take care of the issue first and get your hair to a healthy state to where your hair is able to withstand that tension from extra hair and, and as well as your scalp so you don't want to just throw in you know um extension hair to your hair and um and just you know call it a month because when you take those braids out you're gonna have even more of a problem than you started out with so just make sure that your hair is healthy enough before you start adding in you know a synthetic or whatever kind of hair you're using that you really want to make sure that your hair is healthy first um because it's just it's not going to be a good thing you can't really get to your hair and moisturize it the way you would be able to if you used no additional hair to begin with all right number three weaves sew-ins let's talk about it so the same thing about box braids putting them in when your hair is damaged putting in weaves when your hair is already damaged no ma'am no 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 do not do that when you take that weave out yeah you're gonna have some growth but you're also gonna have a lot of breakage as well so kind of counterproductive you never i'm gonna repeat this i'm gonna say this louder for the people in the back do not do not do not please do not put in weaves when your hair is already damaged for one you can't get to your hair and moisturize it the way you need to you cannot take care of your hair the way you need to you cannot condition it the way you need to and all of that is going to catch up so like i said with box braids make sure that your hair is healthy enough to withstand tension of foreign hair number two your foundation is just too tight you do not want a foundation when it comes to sew-ins. You don't want a foundation that's too tight because that's going to put a lot of stress and tension on your scalp, honey. And on top of the foundation, you know, you have the sew-in and the thread and all that going on. No, mm -mm, that's not going to work. It's just, it's not going to work, okay? You are going to, it's just, it's not going to work. Just don't do it. Let's just leave it here. Cut the video. Cut, cut it. When you take out your sew-in, you'll either have balding areas, thinning areas, scalp damage. You just don't want to do it. I've seen it so many times when I worked in a natural hair salon. I was a natural hairstylist, so I've seen it so many times and you just do not want to do that. Some damage that you get from that is very irreversible and I'm saying, I'm just letting you guys know, don't do it quick weaves um i've seen a lot of those where you're using glue to glue on your hair i do not suggest you do that either because that glue definitely is going to be tearing out some areas in places of your hair which they have um they have this certain type of solution i'll say like a cream that you put on your hair like you lay you gel your hair down and then you put on this stuff um and it acts as a barrier between your hair and the glue i mean that's a lot of stuff you know that's that it's it's, it's just a lot and you're kind of taking a gamble because you really don't know when you're you know pulling the weave out you don't know if some of your hair is going to come along with that and that can really, 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 really be detrimental when it comes to um, retaining your length and your hair health. Even though, even though things like weaves um, are protective styles because your ends are tucked. But the issues that I was explaining to you guys are really the things that can hinder your protective style from flourishing, especially in weaves and quick weaves. You really have to make sure that you are doing them right. There is nothing wrong with wearing them. Let me say that again for the people in the back. There is nothing wrong wearing them, but you want to make sure that you are doing it properly. Properly. 
you want to make sure that you are doing these things properly with caution, okay? Please. All right, let's go to wigs. So the problem with wigs and how we can counter at that, those issues that arrive. So for some reason, when we put wigs on, we automatically associate the wig with being our hair over, you know, prolonged amount of time, right? Depending on the mindset that you're in and all that good stuff. And we completely forget that we have our own hair under there. And the same with weaves. Whenever we visually see something on our head that is supposed to mimic our hair, sometimes we can forget that we have our actual own hair. And that's where the neglect comes in. So if you are wearing wigs, which to me are a little better than wearing sew-ins because you can directly get to your hair. But if you are wearing wigs, please make sure that you are properly taking care of your hair under neath it okay you want to make sure that you're removing those wigs at night and you're moisturizing your hair and you're giving your hair the love and attention that it needs and if you wake up the next morning and decide you want to plop it back on your head that is you that is your business but please just make sure that you are taking care of your hair underneath in all of these like i said with weaves you can't really get to your hair um as accessible as you could if you were just wearing a wig so that is something to think about but that's a personal decision that you have to make for yourself but as far as wigs you guys know that i've been wearing them i think i wore them about four or five times um i wore the hair the her given hair one i only wore it for the video so i haven't worn it out yet and then the one that i got for halloween i wore that a couple times out and i just braided it um on the side and put like the scarf on it. If you guys haven't seen that video, I will link that video up right here. But like I said, you really wanna make sure that you're taking care of your hair underneath and you're not just putting on these things to cover up what is, what is on your head, right? Because the whole idea is to appreciate love and treat your hair with kindness and give your hair what it needs. And all of these things are just additions, right? So overall, protective styling, can be amazing when you're using braids and weaves and wigs and twists. All four of those can be absolutely amazing and help you retain a lot of length. Um, I know there are a lot of YouTubers who uh, primarily use sew-ins and I've seen a couple um, that use wigs. I think it's wigs to waist length. I think that's her channel. You guys go check her out um i know that she predominantly uses wigs and stuff like that to grow out her natural hair and her natural hair is beautiful so it can be done don't let anybody tell you that it can't it can be done but you also want to make sure that you're doing it properly because when not done properly it can really cause havoc on your hair and you don't want to set yourself back even further your main priority first should be the health of your hair okay so if you're coming from heat damaged hair like really damaged hair and you're just saying okay you know what i'll just put some box braids in I'll, let me just put a sewing in and just i'll just wait for it to grow out that is the mindset you do not want to have you want to start taking care of your hair and giving your hair love and and conditioning it and moisturizing it and finding a real true protective style to put your hair in until you're able to do those styles okay um even buns bunning is a really good alternative as well if you just want to put your hair up but also the thing with bunning is that if you do it too frequently where you tie the the hair band around your hair that area is prone to a lot more breakage so kind of weigh that out you know just decide if that's something for you if it's not for you you can do it a couple times a week maybe once a week twice a week whatever you want to do um but to me one of the best styles to get you going in the direction of health first is something like two strand twist or even uh braids with your own natural hair because you're able to moisturize it every day you're able to just throw it up in a cute little like ponytail a bun um you can do head wraps you can do so many things with your twist that involves your ends being tucked away they look really pretty. They're elegant. You can dress them up. You can dress them down. 
like I said, you guys, that has primarily primarily been my go-to style for so long and I really have that style to thank for my um, length retention as well as my head wraps and as well as just me learning my hair. So it's all about learning your hair and knowing what your hair likes and knowing what it doesn't like and it's a learning curve. So never let anybody tell you that what you're doing to your hair is wrong and um, never let anybody tell you that you're not beautiful the way that you are in your style. Um, rock it. Rock the style you want, how you want, and when you want. But like I said, always take care of your hair underneath. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. And I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and join into the tribe. Until next time.